Let me just kind of break this down for people just so they can get a better understanding of what's happening here. So when we have oxidative stress, oxidative stress is we're losing electrons. What's the whole goal of the Krebs cycle? The whole goal of the Krebs cycle is essentially gather up electrons, okay? So you have fats, like I mentioned before, they're all funneling down to acetyl-CoA. Carbohydrates, all funneling down to acetyl-CoA. Proteins, all funneling down to acetyl-CoA, right? And then you can see on the carbohydrate side, like I mentioned, look at a lot of the nutrients that are involved in funneling the carbohydrates down to acetyl-CoA. Different B vitamins, okay? Zoom in some. B1, B2, B3, magnesium, all play really important roles. And then look at the carbohydrates. Look at the amino acids that are involved. Cysteine, that's a major precursor for glutathione. Serine, really important for stress. Glycine, that's your major amino acid in collagen, right? This is why when you're, when you're stressed and you're sick, it's why your grandma tells you to have chicken soup, right? Especially with the whole bone in there because you're getting a lot of these amino acids in a liquid form. So if your tummy's doesn't feel good and you're nauseous, right? Because the infections tend to really cause nausea because your energy is going to fighting an infection versus digestion. So it's trying to shut that down. That's why your, your grandma said chicken soup, right? Ideally, we, we keep the noodles out. Now look at the fats, right? Look at where the fats can go. So the fats go down to acetyl-CoA, but it can also go and create these ketones, right? This is beta-hydroxybutyrate. This is a ketone, okay? Now really important here. So we have this acetyl-CoA right? This is kind of our energy currency that everything gets converted from our three major macronutrients, fats, carbs, and proteins. And again, if you're listening on home as a video version of this of me going through it, I know it's a little confusing, but I'm going to try to make, break it down. Acetyl-CoA comes around this citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. It's the same thing. It goes around twice, okay? And you can see GSH, that stands for glutathione. FE stands for iron. So if you're a female and you're very low iron or you're anemic or vegetarian vegan, that could be a problem. So let me let so me you pause see, you there real quick because I want to yeah. I want I want to point out something you're showing here on this cycle that you've got to have not only glutathione but you've got to have iron. So you you gave a shout out to the anemic women, and what I want to point out is that the women that came into this infection anemic, which is extremely common, women that have hormonal imbalances, it's an epidemic problem. So many women have heavy periods or maybe post childbirth, their period was screwed up and they're having heavy menstruation. So they're coming into this anemic or they're coming into this with low ferritin. And then that's compounded by maybe a mold exposure where now they have low glutathione levels. The way you're showing this cycle here, if you come in with low iron and low glutathione, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. And women are more predisposed because if they have hormonal imbalances, guess what happens to their period? They get heavier heavier period, they're going to just lose that iron. Now, men on the other side, men have it, you know, they can have increased iron that can cause oxidative stress because iron is like, you know, can be like gasoline on the fire if it does get too high, right? But you can see glutathione, iron, you can see B vitamins, you can see uh, magnesium, you can even see manganese here, and you can see different B vitamins. And what they do is you're creating NAD and FADH, and they're, they're grabbing hydrogen, they're grabbing electrons, okay? So it typically comes around here twice and you get you get usually two NADHs and uh, one FADH2 per, per cycle. And then essentially all of these things will jump into the electron transport chain next, if I could find that section here. But the electron transport chain is the next big step where that kind of gathers nutrients. But for really for today's talk, this is the, really the most important thing. And then just to kind of highlight, you can see some of these toxins over here that come in, right? You can see fluoride, HGs, mercury, AS is going to be uh, arsenic, AL is going to be aluminum. So you can see some of these toxins, how they can kind of come in there.